Welcome back to another episode of the Filmaholic. This is our top shelf episode that we have every Tuesday where we take a new topic each week and do a rank or a list, what have you of it. Um, this week and next week, we're focusing on the 1990s. So this week we're doing our top 10 favorite movie characters of the 1990s. And next week we'll be doing the films of that decade. Um, so to, as always, we do a five honorable mentions before we do the actual top 10. So Ethan, I'm going to let you kick it off with your five honorable mentions. All right, number 15, got uh, Wooderson from Dazed and Confused. <laughs> yep, that's how, that's how we're starting it. Yep. Such such a cool character. Uh, McConaughey's career just blasted off from here. Um, cool character? Get out of here, dude. You know, you wish you were Wooderson. Uh, it's a creep. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to start creepy characters uh <clears throat> yeah such who do i have this creepy on my list not on this list but you know two decades earlier uh, oh. <laughs> uh <laughs> number 14 i got qui-gon jinn uh his short appearance in the star wars universe um he should he should uh he should have been there longer he would have been a lot higher up there liam neeson was perfect for that role um just straight murder was unacceptable. Um, number 13, I got Jules Winfield. Pulp Fiction, bring it in there. I know he's on your probably top five. Um, number 12, I got Jack Slater from Last Action Hero. Uh, so cool, dude. Uh, favorite Arnold movie. The character's just hilarious. All these quirks he has about him. Um, and then number 11, I have Hannibal Lecter, just what nightmares are made of. Uh, not scary enough to be Ultron though. No, not that scary. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's how we're starting it. Um, so for starting with number 15 on my honorable mentions is Marge Gunderson from Fargo. Um, enjoyed following this character. Love the accent. Um, just really fun to watch. Uh, but a very strong character, too. I mean, you know, her doing her job in the movie while also being pregnant and just really good character. And um, Francis McDormand even won an Oscar for playing this character. Uh, number 14 is Gail Weathers. Now, I have several characters from the Scream franchise on my list. So this is the first one. Uh, third favorite Scream character. She comes in at number 14. Um, for Scream and Scream 2. Number 13 is Jackie Brown from Jackie Brown. Another strong character got in there. Um, and really good performance as well. Number 12 is Dr. Alan Grant from Jurassic Park. Um, did that surprise you? A little bit. Uh, favorite character from the Jurassic Park uh, franchise. And last, my number 11 is the second character from Scream, and that's Dewey Riley from Scream 1 and 2, who is my number 11. Man, where's Billy? Are you serious? Yeah, I like, I like him better than Gail. As a character, yeah, she's annoying. God, man. Gail's not annoying. Yeah, she's absolutely annoying. Yeah, I just slapped her in the face, just like Sydney. That's what makes her character so fun to watch. No, she's not fun. You're telling me Gail comes up to you. You're not going to get annoyed by her? I'm not saying in reality. I'm yeah, saying in terms exactly. of the film. Well, yeah, she's annoying. Scream wouldn't be Scream without Gail Weathers. It'd be a five-star film without Gail Withers. It is a five-star film. <laughs> and did you say Alan Grant is your favorite Jurassic Park character? Yes. Not Ian Malcolm? Man. Get out I, of like, here. I like Dr. Grant better than Malcolm. Get out of here with your list. All right. Well, I guess it's okay. That's a, that's a decent start, I guess. Uh, <laughs> uh, my number 10, uh, you ready to talk? 
got Walter Sobchak. Mm. Oh, okay. yeah. So <laughs> Walter is my number six. Okay. So I just rewatched this uh, while I was cleaning, making dinner the other day. Just hilarious uh, and sad at the same time. Just PTSD stricken uh, veteran uh, who just rants nonstop just to hear himself talk and then just makes no sense <laughs> whatsoever. I can get but, you a toe. Yeah, but it's like you can't you can't be mad at him. Like even for like the worst stuff, or like when he dumps your friend's ashes all over you. Sorry, can't, dude. Can't stay, can't stay mad at him. Uh, so likable. John Goodman's best performance ever. Definitely. Um, just that duo too, and that friendship. Uh, and how much he's there for the dude too. Yeah. Which is nice. Um. But yeah, how he 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 turns everything into a Vietnam situation. Well, his buddies didn't die face down in the muck <laughs> for all this. That has nothing to do with Nam, Walter. Not a literal connection. <laughs> no connection. <laughs> uh, yeah. So that is my number six. Uh, my number ten, and I don't know if he'll be on your. He already, you already mentioned him in your honorable mentions, and that's Jules Winfield. Okay. For Pulp Fiction. He is, is my number 10. Um, Tarantino, this is actually the only Tarantino character to make it on my list for the 90s um, as far as top 10. We had Jackie Brown in honorable mentions. Um, but, I mean, even including both of those, like, you know, he always has – Incredibly written characters, rich characters, ones that you want to follow. And Jules, to me, is is the most interesting character in uh, Pulp Fiction. Um, love the scene at the end, by the way, too, in the diner with uh, the wallet and, and all yeah. that. That's just, yeah. Uh, my number nine, I got one of my favorite movies, a uh, character from that. Uh, and I got Johnny Utah from Point yeah, Break. Not on my list. Yeah, your your list is already incorrect. Uh, uh, performance, like I say, is just incredible from Keanu Reeves. I couldn't tell if you were joking earlier when you said it was a bad performance. Well, it wasn't but a good performance. You're insane. Uh, this is ex- the exact performance that it should have been. Um, dramatic, funny in moments. Uh, just exactly what I wanted from a character in this kind of role. It was fun to watch, uh, and just just so cool. Not as cool as his counterpart, but no, no, he can try. Um, um, yeah, not not in my list. Uh, Keanu Reeves, uh, enjoyable. His his best character in the '90s was from Speed. God. Definitely. Um, my number nine. I hope you're ready to talk. And that's Terminator from Terminator 2, Judgment Day. That's my number six. Um, I mean, he is a robot, but the way Arnold plays the character is is fantastic. Um, You just want to keep following this character, and as much as he learns from John throughout the movie to become more human-like, makes you... I mean, it's a robot with essentially no emotions, and... To start but with. You, but you still feel the emotions from him as as he learns that from John throughout the yeah. movie. And then it makes you so sad at the end of the film when he ultimately dies. You tear up when he gave the thumbs up into the, the lava? Sometimes. Yeah. That's such such a good ending for a character. Um, like I say, especially the one that just knows nothing about humanity. And then you just learn, you know. Uh, that line, it's like, oh, now I understand why you cry. Like, man, there you go. One of the saddest moments in cinematic history. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe that'll be a different list we do in the future. <laughs> that's, a, that's a dark list. <laughs> but yeah, that would be my number six. And um, it's a very cool character, too. I know I mentioned it before, but like when I was a kid, we used to go to... Um, we go to the beach, Planet Hollywood, but have a, um, they had a, uh, like a statue 
real life looking one of Terminator from Terminator 2. And I, I was obsessed with it. Just want to take a picture with it. Oh, I time. can't wait. I can't wait to meet him one day. That would be cool. I just have a heart attack and die. But perfect way to go, just like Terminator. <laughs> um, my number eight, uh, you can keep talking. We got Buzz Lightyear in here. My number five. Uh, his his uh, better counterpart I'll get to later. Um, but still, you know, I don't know. I'll, this this entire list that I've got, I could just say perfect casting overall. Um, so I'll just throw that out. That way I don't have to keep repeating it. But, I mean, Tim Allen in this role, just funny. Just uh, so annoying to start with because first time you watch it, you're just like on Woody's side. And he's like, oh, get out of here, man. Get out of my spot. You know, why don't you know you're a toy? Like, it's so u- unique that, like, when I just rewatched it a little while ago, I'm wondering, like, if every toy went through that or if they all knew they were toys. So it's. Uh, yeah, more, that's an interesting more, thought. More sympathetic for him because I'm like, if every toy went through this, like, why are you guys not easing them into it? because that's one thing that they did not understand with Toy Story 4. Um, but, like, with this character, like, it's so funny. Uh, I'm going to say no, that they all they all haven't had that, because if, if, if they did, like you said, I feel like that would be explained in the first film. See, I don't know. Cause it's and weird. I felt like, like... He would be the only toy that doesn't know he's not a toy. Because the soldiers don't think they're soldiers. No, but he also had all that stuff written down inside of his package and everything, and like, um, he was a new, he he was a new toy too, and that's something to think about, was that Buzz in general was a new toy, a character, um, in that world. So like, he probably just came off the production line and was and was sold very quickly. You know, well, a lot I mean, of these other toys are in a store with each other, so they probably communicate with each other before they're even bought. But, I mean, Woody would have been a new toy when he came out. And there would have been less toys since you find out in the second one he was a lot older. So that's what I don't know. Um, but it definitely make, made me more sympathetic towards him the last time I watched it. Um, but, yeah, solid character, good lines. And, like, when he, you know, truly realizes, like, all the stuff, like, oh, not a toy, I can't fly, it's just... It gets it gets rough for a good five minutes there. I agree with all that, and I also think he, even though like that's not his real backstory, he is a toy. He does his character does have all of that Buzz Lightyear mythology behind it that they even did that spinoff show, um, not in the same style as Toy Story or near quality. But they did have that spinoff show about it. And, uh, you know, you do get more of that character in his mythology in the sequel yeah. uh, with his father and whatnot. So and it, it's a good I, I love the friendship, too, that starts in this film with them by the end of the film and then continues into the other films. Kind of kind of uh, reminds me of Walter in a way there, honestly, too. Oh, man. I am Mrs. Nesbitt. <laughs> um, now, we're going to get to my seven and eight, and I know they're not going to be on your list. Uh, my number eight is Jack Dawson from Titanic. No, you can go ahead and mention your number seven, too, if you want, because she ain't on no, there. Not yet. Yet. Not yet. Uh, Jack <laughs> Dawson, really strong character. I liked him. Uh, Leo's one of my favorite actors. Really liked his performance. This is really... Uh, I don't know, it might be one of my favorite performances in the 90s. I don't know, both of them really gave really strong performances in that movie. Um, yeah, ultimately just a really good guy. I mean, look what he does in the movie. When he, Even from the like, start of the film with his friend, getting him, helping him, getting on there too, the ship, and then um, saving, helping her, you know, um, when they first meet um, throughout his journey with her throughout the film helping her get on that ship at the end 
um, by even though he knows that Billy Zane's character is lying, he goes along with it because he wants her to be okay. She she ultimately gets off the boat, um, which, by the way, a little small thing. If she hadn't got off that boat, she he probably would have lived. Yeah. Because he would have only been able to, he would only had to like fight for himself. Would have got on the piece by himself. Probably would have met up with her. Everything would have been great. Yeah. So, That's no, sympathy, no sympathy for her. Also, if he would have just let her kill herself, he would have survived too. <laughs> Who's your number seven? Eric Draven from The Crow. Which I know, yeah, I know you don't like it. It's you didn't watch it as a kid. Too snobby. You said I'm not watching this garbage. Uh, love this movie. Um, and this character, you know, is a revenge story. But you know, when he goes out for revenge, it's not against everybody in the world. Like, oh, this is what happened. Like, it's just he's brought back to get justice on the people that killed him and his wife. Simple plot executed perfectly um uh this is the only thing i've seen brandon lee in but i thought he did a fantastic job uh unfortunately this was his last role um but i just love this character you know he follows through um just strategically going through one by one and then like the daughter figure uh that he has like he connects with her when he comes back um love this character so much but I know you don't care. <laughs> uh, I mean, he's a, he's a fine character, and like you said, it's a it's a, it's a good simple plot. Um, I wouldn't mind seeing that movie remade. Uh, I just I don't know, like it's it's very nineties, very nineties. I think comedy. it's been a while since you watched it too. I've seen it enough. I don't I don't know if you've seen it twice. Uh, I I know I've seen it with you once, and I feel like I've seen it once after that. So. I think you need to revisit it. Uh, my number seven <laughs> is rude. My number seven is another Titanic character, and that is Rose. My number seven. Um, I like her and Jack a, both a lot, um, but the reason I, I gave her a little bit more um, up there at number seven than than Jack is is she has a better character arc in the film and more development than he does. Um, he is pretty much the same character at the end of the film when he dies than he was at the beginning, except he fell in love with her. Um, but the way he acts and everything is still the same. He's just more, he just has to deal with, you know, like worry about two people now versus just himself. Um, her, her, she starts off very differently in the beginning. Um, even though the person she ends up becoming was always there she broke out from that and became this character throughout the film. Uh, and somebody too, that was willing to jump off that boat to go save him and stay on the boat for him and potentially die. I have not seen this movie in a few years, but her character always annoyed me. Why? Uh, I well, once she killed him, uh, let's not beat around the bush. That absolutely. I did not get him. If she'd have stayed on the boat, they would have well, survived. I mean that is Apple that is Apple. very clearly. I, I do. I I will stand by that. I think if she had stayed on that boat, then he wouldn't have died. But yeah. she didn't know that, and she had no way of knowing that. Yeah. And oh, she no. followed her heart and got off <clears throat> the boat to be with him. Yeah, I don't know. It just felt like see if I rewatched it, I might change my mind. But like last time, from what I remember, I don't know. I just thought like she was kind of annoying, like, you know, kind of slumming it with him just to have like an adventure, um, just to kind of rebel from what she was expected. I don't see, I don't really see it that way. I think she did fall in love with him. I don't know. Uh, that's what people viewed it as. And I feel like that's what Billy Zane's character viewed it as. And that's why he thought that, she would change her mind and go on the boat and still be with him and all that. But I mean, you see that she didn't even like when he, they both make it out. 
she hides from him at the end too when they're on that they're in new york well i'm not saying like she would end up with billy zane but i would be interested to know who she ended up with overall yeah we don't we never know that but we do see that she ended up going and doing the things that she that she talked about with him as far as like going to um the santa monica pier riding horses on the beach like there was pictures of all that at the end that she still went and did all that um and I think like, she had an acting career as well. She went into did, did, oh, did no bad did about that. him dying, probably. Uh, probably, yeah. <laughs> yeah, probably, well, that was her fault. Um, so I'm sure, like, well, like she said, I'm sure she knows now. Like, man, if I'd stayed on that boat, uh, we'd be together. Potentially, I mean, a lot of people that were on the boat with them that still went in the water by themselves froze to death. Yeah, but, but all, there was a chance. Was there was a chance he was such a survivor that, I mean, she ended up on that board. He would have ended up on that board most likely if he hadn't been with her. All the stuff he had been through, he's definitely surviving yeah. that. Um, but yeah, it's been a few years. <sighs> oh, we already and talked about six. I already got through my five and six, so I have my one through four left. All right, so my number five. Uh, you had your number one. I got the dude. Yep. The dude is my number one favorite character of the 1990s. One of my favorite characters in cinema history. So funny. I can't believe he's that low on your list. Number five. Yeah. These other four characters better be just my boy. We'll get to your number two next. (laughs) Um, So funny. Uh, the dude abides just going through life, not making anything of himself, but just happy. Exactly. Just let him exactly. bowl, let him bowl, let him drink. It's all good. Fuck it, man. Oh, yeah, that's that's your attitude. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, just, that's all he wants. He just wants to be happy. Don't want to mess with nobody. Just leave me alone. Just let me bowl and just drink my white Russians. Life is good. Exactly. And he's a good guy, too. I mean, ultimately. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what are you, you... You think he does bad decisions? In, huh? He's a bit of a schemer. Definitely definitely playing people. Uh, <laughs> here uh, and there. Nah. Yeah. Nah. He definitely nah. was playing people. I'm not saying it was good people. Kill that poor woman. That poor woman. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I do like the dude a lot. Yeah. You should be ashamed you have him at number five. Best character of the decade. Well, this is top ten favorite characters. Not best. It's the same. Um, What is your number four? Woody. God, man. God, man. I told you we get to your number two next. Woody is my number two favorite character of the decade. I don't know who you have up above these guys. Which, what do you got left? Your three and four? Yeah. No, they're not. Which you're not going to say because one of those are already on your honorable mentions. So. Yeah, and then number two, I know it's not. Um, but yeah, Woody, uh, credible character, so funny, such an amazing character arc uh, in the films. Tom Hanks, America's dad, only choice to voice this character. Because you got to have somebody, when you hear him, you just trust him as a leader. Yeah. It's Tom Hanks. Nobody else could do this. Funny, heartfelt. Um, just a character that takes you through four films um, as a toy. Not even, oh, what are you making that face for? Toy Story 4 is amazing. Second best film in the franchise. No, you're wrong about this. <laughs> yeah, but that's my number two. Do you want me to go ahead with my number four? or? Yeah, you can, I guess. Uh, my number four, my final Scream character, definitely not on your list. Um, that's Sidney Prescott from Scream 1 and 2. Um, favorite for horror franchise, favorite character in that franchise. Um She's a strong character from the beginning um, with what she, you know, she had to deal with with her mom dying before the film even started. 
um, in the place that she's at when the film starts. But the journey she goes on through with that film and then in the second film, which is only a year later, um, and she has to go through all of it all over again. Um, yep. I think Nev Campbell's uh, performance is really good. Yeah, number four. That's pretty good. Not bad. Uh, my number three, uh, and it's interesting that this wasn't on your list because of your characters from the last decade, is Forrest Gump. I don't understand. Yeah. Why, do, why um, do you think he was on my list? You had Benjamin Button on your list for the 2000s. Damn right I had Benjamin Button and on my list. His character definitely resembles the same kind of stuff you were mentioning about Benjamin Button just being a good guy, helping people, you know. Definitely the same. So it's like you just said, screw Forrest Gump, even though he's the original Benjamin Button. <laughs> Get out of here. Uh, uh, I don't want to hear it, man. You finally watched the movie. and Tom Hanks is no Brad Pitt. You're right. Brad Pitt is no Tom Hanks. I understand. Um, Brad Pitt wishes he was Tom Hanks. Um, okay. Who's got more acting Oscars, dude? That's what I thought. How many does Tom Hanks have? He has two. Both for leading roles, not supporting. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you finally watched it, uh, and you can apologize to everyone you told this movie sucked. I don't know. Never, about. Since you never actually watched this. <laughs> I had seen parts of the film um, over the course of my life. Not as much as I thought, and like they were random. Like I'd seen a lot, a lot of scenes at the beginning. I definitely saw yeah. the beginning of the film with you when you watched it um, at the apartment. You walked out. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and there was also definitely other um, scenes. And I, I saw the end of the movie too, for the most part, with you. I think of the apartment. I, th- I think I must have left in the middle. <laughs> that's that's usually what you do with movies that you say you don't like. I I watch the beginning and the end. Not for me. <sighs> Fury Road. First 10 minutes and the last 10, it didn't get me. So <laughs> I'm not worried about the middle two hours. <laughs> nope. um, I will I, say I, you made me want love, some shrimp from Dr. Pepper. You can keep the Dr. Pepper. I'll just take the shrimp. Um, so, such a good character. Like I say, just, just so innocent. Uh, everything he does is just to help people. Um, you know, not not trying to hurt anybody overall. Tom Hanks' performance is incredible. Um, okay. Get out of here with that. Okay, <laughs> garbage. Um, I don't even want to hear that disrespect. Um, but I'm, yeah, it is good. But I honestly think it would be better if you had watched it in 1995 and didn't have like all of the Forrest Gump stuff in the air like afterwards. Well, and like I said, that's why I told you, I think you might have had it at 4.5 if you'd have watched yeah. it when you were a kid. Because I was listening uh, to the Unspooled podcast um, where they do like the top 100 AFI films. Yeah. And they were talking about that and they were like, you know, pretty much critiquing it from like a modern. It's like, oh, you know, it's just like whitewashing and all this stuff. And it was, I don't know. It's like if you look at it from a modern, it's like it's a movie of its time. So like I say, if if you had a movie like that come out now, I can't imagine people would be like as critically accepting. Far as Gump. Yeah, I mean they would definitely like, if even if you had the same same movie released now, like they're still going to praise Tom Hanks, you know, Gary Sinise, Robin Wright, you know, all that. But like as the movie overall, they're definitely going to complain about certain things. Oh, absolutely. Um, but like I, I think it's a fantastic film. You can argue. If it's the best of 1984, if you want that and Pulp Fiction, absolutely are, not. That and Pulp Fiction are totally different movies to compare. So it's it's super. It's kind of hard. Um, you got like a fake, you know, historical drama compared to Tarantino's different timeline film. Um. Honestly, I wish we had kind of did a free pour episode of Forrest Gump because we didn't really talk about it. Because 
There, I mean, it's really good. There was parts that I didn't like, and I mentioned that to you. I didn't yeah. like uh, when he met a lot, a lot of the times when he met people that were famous in the movie that I didn't really work for me. The presidents were okay. Like I, I kind of could believe that. Um, I hated the Elvis thing at the beginning because it was Elvis, or like the what did you not like about it? I just that that he. Did yeah, I mean, I guess it was the Elvis thing, but like it was that it was such a big thing. Oh, oh, Elvis dances like that because Forrest Gump showed him how to dance. And that was one thing they complained about in the, the podcast. Was the dancing? Were, oh yeah, the way they were like, oh, what is Elvis? Uh, he just making fun of a crippled kid. I mean, but I don't know. Maybe I don't Elvis. Know. I, I didn't like that. Um, I didn't like the John Lennon one either. Which that, I, I don't know what that was. Was did he? make imagine because of that is that what they were i don't know i think i heard that in the past which i don't even know if that's what i got from the scene but i just I, it, it felt weird to me in general just watching it well, that's like that's what they were doing the song lyrics like that's all he said like uh you know oh yeah you know no religions oh no religion too so i mean it's kind of a riff but yeah it uh, was not it was in there just because you know that's just what you want to throw for john lennon famous stuff I just like I didn't think that stuff needed to be in the movie. I don't know what it, I don't know what it added. Maybe it was in the book, and that's yeah. why it was in the movie. But I don't know. Um, the president stuff, like I said, worked better for me. Like I liked the one with JFK when he was like, "I had to go pee" or "Have to go pee," whatever. Yeah, I said he had to go pee. <laughs> uh, the Linda B. Johnson one was kind of weird, but and the next I one was very like, I I'll was put like... you in Watergate. Yeah, I thought that was hilarious. Love it so much. Because, like, as a kid, I didn't know what Watergate was. It's like when you rewatch it, like, oh, nice. <laughs> Forrest Gump, you know, in these major uh, historical moments. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Five out of five. How many characters do you have left? I have my one and two. Uh, go ahead and say your number two. Number two. Uh, is the genie from Aladdin. Get out of here. Get, I don't even think you've watched this movie either, to be honest. Yeah, I did. I didn't think uh, Will Smith yeah, you... was better than I expected. <laughs> you shut your mouth. <laughs> this, this is some of Rob Williams' best work. And if it, if it was anyone else, it would not be on this list because they're not going to be able to pull off all the voices, uh, you know, making different characters, like the emotional moments you've got. Um, just perfection. I'll give a hot take. I don't. You, you will shut your hot take down. Jim Carrey could have played that role just as good. No, absolutely not. You haven't seen it. How do you know? I have seen it. No, you have not. Overrated. No, you're insane. I'm not saying it's bad, but you are crazy. I think Jim Carrey could have done it just as good. good. Jim Carrey sucks. You don't think that? <laughs> He's not worth half of Robin Williams is. I don't know. About comedian, that. comedian or actor, he doesn't even stand a chance. Okay. Yeah. Pound pound for pound, Robin Williams easily destroys Jim Carrey. Uh, how many how many Oscars Jim Carrey got? Yeah, that's what I thought. Did Robin Williams win an Oscar? What did he win for? Yeah, Goodwill good Hunting. Will, good, which you haven't seen either. <laughs> I yeah, turn on the night maybe to make you go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sure. moving on to my number three. And that's one that you've already said in your honorable mentions, and that is Qui Gon Jinn from Star Wars: The Phantom Menace. Um, gone too soon, definitely. Liam Neeson was perfect to play Qui Gon. Um, that sense of calmness that you want in the Jedi, but also sense of control and power that he has as the character. Um, one of my favorite Jedi's in general, um, probably. Probably my second favorite Jedi um, behind Obi-Wan. 
Obi Wan probably my favorite Jedi, and then uh, then Qui Gon. Um, I wish he had been in the in the series longer. Um, and what I love so much about him too is he not, he's not he's not like the other Jedi in the Council. Um, which honestly, if he had been alive much longer, I think he would have definitely left the Jedi Order, um, and probably became the first gray Jedi, which is something we still don't have. Um, <laughs> but as, I know Ahsoka does something similar in Clone Wars, and I don't know exactly what she calls herself other than she's not a Jedi. But essentially, I think he would do that, and he prob- probably would have started this gray Jedi thing, because I still feel like the teachings of the Jedi and stuff were important to him, but he just he didn't agree with their decision-making. Um, starting with the fact that they didn't want to have Anakin in the count and, you know, become a Jedi uh, yeah. at all. Um, and he felt that he was the chosen one. Um, Anakin is the chosen one still. Um, just unfortunately, all these other people died. Uh, yeah. But yeah. Yeah. It was my number 14. So you got what you got left. That's it. That's it. That's my top oh. 10 favorite characters in the 90s. I got my number one. I told you to be up there. You forgot. I got Bodhi from Point Break. Favorite character of the 90s? Dude, More than I, the dude in Woody? Yeah, dude. I was, I was making this list, and I was just like, he just kept creeping up. <laughs> I'm just like, it was tough between him and Jeannie. To be honest, uh, I don't care about your hot take garbage opinions. Um, favorite '90s film? I just love the duo between him and Johnny Utah. Patrick Swayze crushed it in this role. I mean, he's almost—he's more determined, but he's like—he's a lot like the dude. I would say, like he—he he just wants—he <laughs> he literally wants a lot more dude. violent than the. Uh... The dude, I mean, you know, the dude did some stuff. You know, he he didn't have motivation. That was the dude's problem. Bodie Bodie is motivated, um, and he, he all he does he wants to literally just surf. You know, at whatever means, have a good time. Doesn't doesn't hurt anybody until he's forced to, and he only does that because he's put in a situation where somebody hurts his friends, so he backs them up. Um. But he just wants to surf, dude. One you know, ultimate ride. And he's willing to pay whatever cost he's got to. And he does pay that cost. It, it's it's funny because Dom was in your 2000s list, wasn't he? He was uh, number 15. Yeah, he was. Okay. He, he wishes. Yeah, that's a point Which break. Which was, but... yeah, exactly. That's exactly what it is. He just he... wants to race at what, what call, all costs. That's it. Wait, that's the thing. He doesn't. Dom didn't hurt anybody until he was forced to, like when that guy killed his dad. So he just beat his eye out. <laughs> uh, that guy's coming back as the villain in the last film. Mark my word. Think he is? He's gonna have maybe half beaten off maybe. face. And it's going to be Nicolas Cage. <sighs> Give me my ticket. Skip number nine. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I, I love this character so much. The dialogue he's got is hilarious. It's quotable. Um, just amazing. Imagine this. So what if they hadn't made Fast and the Furious, and instead they had did with point to point break what they did with Fast and the Furious? What do you mean? Keep doing it? Keep making those movies. But Bodie died at the end. Dom got away. Do we know for sure he died? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think it showed him dead. He drowned. He, he just goes off into the water. You don't know he died. It, yeah, it shows you he's he's going to surf and the wave knocks him down in the water. Oh, that doesn't mean he drowned. It just means he got knocked down in the water. <laughs> Johnny Utah said he's not coming back. He may have said that, but then you make the sequel and turns out you know, they got him out of the water. If they got they him out, him. he's in prison. Exactly. They're not breaking him out of prison. He ain't got nobody left. All his friends are dead. That's what, Johnny, that's what you think. That's what you think. That's what I know. I saw him die. <laughs> That's what you think. Two point two break. We get that one. 
God. It's about Johnny Utah. It's just about him doing his own thing. And then we get the third one, which is just called Point Break again. And Sir? they break. What's up? Point Break. Tokyo. No, nah, the third one's Point Break Australia. That's the third film. Well, they were in the end. They were, they were, no, you can't do Australia because that's where the big wave in the, fun, in the first one was. Yeah, but it's not going to be any of the characters. That's where, uh, well, you can't have Patrick Swayze Bodie come back then. He wouldn't be in Australia because that no, big 50, The third one 50, would be completely separate. It would just be called Point Break Australia. Brand new characters. And then you make the fourth one, which is just called Point Break again. And it opens with them breaking him out of prison. Ooh. People. New characters. People. <laughs> new characters. Dominic yeah. Toretto. You write him in in this one. He's a street racer. Breaks uh, Bodhi out of prison. For what reason? Make no sense here, man. Hey, man. I'm not writing the screenplay. I'm just one coming up with ideas. One and done, dude. He died in the end point break. He ain't coming back. But I do. I, I love this character. I love this film. I say in my top ten of all time. It is. I don't. I don't care. I. I. I I'm probably gonna watch this movie after we get done. Just I'm because. curious where Swayze's character in the '80s is gonna come on your list when we get to that. It's in the top five. Because right now I made a soft list before I go back and rewatch a lot of these films before when we do the 80s stuff um, and yeah. he's number 10 right now this particular yeah. character you are insane um, but I'm looking at a couple and he, he will probably move up to at least 9 wait wait till you rewatch <laughs> it though then he's moving up number 2 <laughs> uh, we've got to find a way to screen share when we watch that somehow it's not on that. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah find something. Sarah's. Sarah's really oh. excited to watch it. We're, we're, we're going to either have to have a, a screen Red share. Or... Yeah. She said, I'm not watching that. No. Uh, don't don't tell her anything about it. We're either going to have to do a screen share or like uh, we'll Skype each other and we'll sit play at the same time so I can get your reactions. American Roadhouse was named after him. Yeah. And Logan's Roadhouse. Road. Just kidding. All right, guys, that's our top 10 favorite movie characters of the 1990s. Next week, we'll have our top 10 films of the 1990s. Uh, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel, and we will see you guys next time.